the sad reality that has dawned on the whole nation is that thousands of Ghanaian lives are in serious danger as people will live for decades with the repercussions of making a decision to invest their life savings in an enterprise that has abruptly crashed, leaving a foggy firmament of uncertainty hanging over the future of their investments. It may be that Men's Gold and its directors were well-intentioned in creating what they saw as job opportunities for Ghanaians. And those who invested might have genuinely wanted to prop up what they also saw as a wholly Ghanaian indigenous enterprise. The sad reality, however, is that both expectations, no matter how well-intentioned, have not been fully met. Most of the rhetoric making the rounds has been mockery of victims and the blame game among politicians. I sincerely believe that leaving this issue within the realm and domain of politics will do very little and can only complicate matters and deepen the sorrow of victims. We all have great confidence in the state to do what it can to allay the plight of fellow citizens that have been affected. I'm sorry to say that retrieving every men's gold investor's principle will be an overstretch for the state, even if all assets are confiscated and auctioned. Of course, the state cannot also use taxes paid by hard-working farmers and market women who brave the uh, scorching sun every day to pay for the luxurious excesses of a select few.